Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're working on Math Test Success, Chapter 24, so you could be as successful as possible on any standardized math exam, specifically the ASVAB Military Placement Exam, Arithmetic Reasoning, Mathematical Knowledge. This is a final test for this book. It is a mixed review of different topics of all of the previous 20 chapters or so. Hopefully you've gone through all of those chapters uh, and now you're taking a final exam or a test. You really need to have paper and pencil out in front of you. You could buy the book. This is what it looks like. You could buy the book right on Amazon. The test is right in here in the back. You kind of pause the video, work your way through that test, unpause the video, watch how I solve it. That's really the best case scenario for you to be as successful as possible. Next you could do is you could just go to mathtestsuccess.com download it for free, print it all out, and do the same thing. Either one, I just want to make sure you are as successful as possible. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started on this test right here. What we want to do is mark up the equation as much as we can, circling important things, uh, looking for keys, looking at my solutions, and working our way logically through this. That's why these math tests are so important. They check your ability to logically solve um, problems. What is 30% of 150? 30%, I think of this as a little arrow, knocking the decimal place over one, two, just like those two dots. So that's the same thing as 0.3. Of means to multiply 150. So what is 30% of 150? I multiply across here to go three times zero, three times five, carry the one, three plus one, 450, obviously that's too high. My decimal place is over one here, so I gotta move it over one here to give me 45. Correct answer, answer B right there. Number two, simplifying fractions. This is a tricky one, a lot of people get wrong on these standardized tests. I have two fifths plus one third. This is not an equation, it is only an expression. So I could only multiply each factor by one so as not to affect the value. The key to adding fractions is that they have the same denominator. The bottom number is a denominator, so they have to be the same. So the only number that these go into, or the smallest number they go into, is 15. So what I'm going to do here, to get this to a 15, I have to multiply it by a 3. I can't just multiply by 3, it'll change the value. I could only multiply by one. So three over three is the equivalent of one. Doesn't change the value, but it gives me a 15 in the bottom. Over here, I need a 15, so I multiply by a five over a five. Again, that's one, doesn't change the value. That gives me six fifteenths plus five fifteenths. I now have that common denominator. The number on the bottom is the same. The rule is I add across the top, and I keep that bottom number. So the correct answer, 11 fifteenths, answer B right here. Number three, this is an equation, different than an expression. Here, I need to solve for x. I have 4x minus 7 equals 9. The goal on solving an equation is get that x by itself, so I need to isolate it. I gotta get rid of that 7. I am subtracting it here. I get rid of it with the reverse operation. I add seven. I just can't add seven to the left. I gotta keep that thing balanced. So I have to add seven to the right. My equal sign's right here. Four X minus seven plus seven, that equals zero. So that gives me four X by itself. Nine plus seven, 16. Still solving for X. I am multiplying by four. I reverse that by dividing by four. These cancel, gives me x by itself. 16 divided by 4 is 4. x is equal to 4. Correct answer, answer C right there. <clears throat> Number 4, I have a rate problem here. Guaranteed you'll see one of these. I am traveling 300 miles in 5 hours. What is the average speed? I still want miles per hour. I look up here, all my answers are miles per hour. I don't have to multiply by distance or time or anything. All I need to do is reduce that fraction. 
five goes into five one time, five goes into 300, or five goes into 30 six times, into 300 60 times. I still have miles per hour. It is just a reduced fraction, 60 miles per hour. Answer B. Okay, let's take a look at number five. This is really how well you remember math class. This is an expression. I can't solve for x. I just need to factor it. x squared minus 9x plus 20. I am looking for the factors that are going to give me a quantity. You know, an idea of what I'm doing, I can look at my answers and see they're all factors like that. The only factors are x squared to give me x squared are an x and an x. I am looking for the factors of 20 to give me a 9. A 20 and a 1 multiplied together give me a 20. Added together give me a 21 or a 19, not that value. A 10 and a 2 multiplied together give me 20. Added would give me a 12 or an 8. That doesn't work. A 5 and a 4 multiply give me a 20. Added would give me a 9. So my factors are a 5 and a 4. Either they are both positive or both negative to give me that positive. So either they're both get, they're going to have the same sign, either both negative or both positive. Then I look over here, I want a negative 9. So they both have to be negative. So that's my answer right there, x minus 5, x minus 4. Right here, multiplication is commutative. Doesn't matter if it's this times this or this times this. So same thing. That's my answer. But before we move on, let's just do a check here. The reverse of factoring is FOIL. And that's an acronym for multiplying the first terms together. So x times x is x squared. The outer terms together, negative 4x. The inner terms together, negative 5x. And then the last terms together, negative 5 times negative 4, is positive 20. I combine similar terms to get x squared minus 9x plus 20. Correct answer, answer A right there. Problem number six, simplify the square root of 48. When well, looking at the factors of 48, it could be a 24 and a 2, a 16 and a 3. If I can find a perfect square, that's going to be a little quicker. 16 is a 4 and a 4. Once I have a pair, one of them comes out. There is no pair for that 3. It stays in. Answer is 4 root 3. Answer A. These aren't primes. I mean, I could keep factoring to 2 and 2 and 2. However, they are a pair, so it comes out. So that's the correct answer. <clears throat> Let's say I did it a different way. I saw root 48 is equal to a 24 and a 2. That's OK. 24 is a 12 and a 2. 12 is a 4 and a 3. A 4 is a 2 and a 2. For every pair, one comes out. Here's a pair of 2s. One comes out. Here's a pair of 2s. One comes out. No pair for that 3. It stays in. 2 times 2 is 4. Still gives me 4 root 3. A lot of ways to do these problems. The more you practice them, the better you're going to get. I just saw 48 as a perfect square. So I knew I was going to be able to go there. OK, problem number seven. Uh, we're looking at solving multiple equations here. 6x minus y equals negative 2. I look here, and I see a lot of fractional or decimal answers. Um, well, these are the same. So if I was racing, I could just cross those two out. And then between these two, they're almost all fractionals, right? I pick. The fractional one, six and a half. But let's go ahead and solve this problem. I have two equations. The last test, I did substitution. I had y is equal to something. Here, I don't have that. So I am going to rewrite this equation right below this one. 6x minus y equals negative 2. I am going to do a different technique here called linear combinations, where I'm going to add these two equations together. 2x plus 6x is 8x y plus negative y is 0. They cancel out. 8 and negative 2 is 6. I divide both sides by 8. These cancel. x is equal to 6 over 8. I reduce that fraction to 3 over 4. And I feel like, oh, it's answer A. It is not. The problem says solve for y. 
So now I have to take this value of x, plug it into either equation. I think I'm going to plug it in right there. 2 times x. x is 3 fourths plus y is equal to 8. Now I have to simplify a little bit. Um, I am multiplying fractions, no common denominators, but 2 will go into here once and into here twice. So that's going to give me 3 halves plus y is equal to 8. 3 halves, 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over is the same as 1 and a half is equal to 8. I'm going to subtract 1 and a half from both sides. These are going to cancel, give me y by itself. I could turn this into a mixed number, get a common denominator, and do those fractions, or I could just think 8 minus 1 is 7, minus another half is 6 and a half. Correct answer, answer D right there. This solving systems of equations was a lot harder than the last one. We could have also done it with substitution. We could have solved for y here, said y is equal to 8 minus 2x. Take that value and plug it in there. A lot of ways to do these problems. I usually try and show you the quickest way and then show you alternative ways as well. Uh, number eight is laws of exponents. Remember that in the last test, and there's a chapter on it as well. When I have the bases are the same, then I add the exponent. So that gives me a to the 2 plus 8, 10. On the denominator here, bases are the same. I add to get a to the 16th. Now I need to subtract. That is going to give me a to the negative 6. Okay, number eight, we talked about laws of exponents. When I multiply and the bases are the same, I add. When I divide, I subtract. So let's go ahead and do this one. a to the first times a to the eighth is a to the power of 8 plus 2, 10. On the bottom here, a to the fifth times a to the 11th is a to the 16th. It's my first rule of exponents. Next rule of exponents is I have to subtract. That's going to give me a to the 10 minus 16, a to the negative 6. That answer is not there. Um, the way I can make this positive is I could reciprocate it. So I make it 1 over a to the 6, and that's the third rule of exponents. So you can make it negative by putting it in a denominator like that. Correct answer, answer D right there. Again, if you don't really remember all this and you need more practice, go back to the chapter on exponents. Um, okay, number nine, what is the slope between these two points? Remember, we reserved the letter M for slope, and it is going to be rise over run, or the difference in the Y values over the difference in the X values, right? It's going to be on the Cartesian coordinate, how far do I go up divided by how far I go over this slope? So I'll call this point 2, this point 1. Therefore, this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. You could have designated them either way. They work out the same. So then here I have y2 minus y1, 8 minus 3 over 3 minus 5. That's going to give me a negative value. That's going to give me 8 minus 3, 5. 3 minus 5, negative 2. Look over there. There is no negative 5 halves. Um, so I'm going to have to reduce this. I'm going to pull that negative out front. 2 goes into 5 2 times with 1 left over. So negative 5 over 2 is the same as negative 2 halves. Correct answer, answer D right here. If you need a channel, think about subscribing hitting the bell so you get notifications, uh, becoming a member, you get early access to the videos and additional videos. It really took me a lot of time to put all of these videos together. So by buying that book, uh, it also supports the channel. Okay, if f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 1, what is f of 3? This is on the function notation. But this is saying f of x and y are interchangeable. But I am saying find f of 3. That is saying this is a function right here 
and I want to take 3 and plug it in for my independent variable. So f of 3 is going to be equal to 2 times x. Well, now 3 and x are the same. So 2 times 3 squared minus 1. So now that I have that, now it's kind of a question of order of operations. Remember, it's parentheses first, then exponents. So I have to do my exponents first. So f of 3 is 2. 3 squared is 3 times 3, 9 minus 1. Then I do multiplication before addition and subtraction. 18 minus 1, 17. Correct answer, answer B right there. All right, hopefully you took that test on your own and you're just checking your work against mine. Uh, the more you practice, the better you get. That's just the way the world works. The harder you work, the, the better you're going to do at anything. So just keep studying. If you're still here at the end of the video, fantastic job. You're really doing what it takes to be successful on any math exam. Thank you.